So we're in a series called The Systematic Kingdom, where we're talking about how God is a systematic God. Mm -hmm. God just didn't, just doesn't do anything for the sake of doing. He's very systematic, meaning that he is very strategic in what he does, how he does it. Amen. Mm -hmm. He has a procedure. He has a method for how he does things. Uh, today, I'm going to break down, still in the systematic kingdom, but I'm going to be breaking down the love system. Y'all say love. love. We're going to break down the love system today. I have a hashtag, which is the same hashtag. It works if you work it. Come on now. <laughs> the love system is going to work, but you got to be the one to work it. You're right, sir. Because the love system is based on the kingdom. The love system is based on the kingdom system of God, right? So, so if we're going to operate in kingdom, one of the most strategic systems that he created was the love system. Because the love system is the foundation of which everything was created. But we talk about the systematic kingdom and we talk about the the talk about how, what is the kingdom number? What is the number for the kingdom? Anybody remember from last week? Twelve. Twelve is the number that symbolically means kingdom. It means order. It means this, it, it means a apostolic order. It's an establishment. It's, it's a perfect number. It's a perfect number that God created all things. Y'all say all things. Oh, all man. things. Because in order for him to create all things, he had to create a kingdom. A kingdom. Right. He had to have things established in the kingdom. And we talked about how there are 12 hours of day. There was a scripture that says, isn't there 12 hours of daytime? He gives us 12 hours in a day. He gives us 12 months in a year. He gives us the 12 tribes of Israel. He gives us the 12 body systems. He gives us the 12 constellations that the sun has to go around in order to create a whole year. I mean, everything is established by kingdom. The number that establishes the kingdom is the number 12. The number when God thought about us, he thought about kingdom. And he only created us through a number, watch this, that correlated with kingdom in heaven as it is on earth. We, he created us, he created yeah, kingdom. Right. What is the number of kingdom again? Twelve. You are created with how many systems in your body? You are created with twelve systems, which correlates to the kingdom. Y'all say kingdom, which correlates to the kingdom of God. God said, if I am going to create man, I am going to create man according to the kingdom. If we could put the systems on the screen for everybody to see. We are man twelve in one. 12 things in one. When we talk about every system that God created, he created it with kingdom in mind. Mm -hmm. Y'all follow me now because I'm going, this is the review. Y'all say review. review. So I'm going to move quick because y'all should have been here last week. So this is the review, right? This is the review. When we look at the kingdom, the 12 kingdoms in one man, 12 systems in one man to represent the kingdom, of one God. When we talk about the first system, I'm going to give you the integumentary system. The integumentary system is going from science to the church. Amen. The integumentary system is the skin that protects the body. It lets us know that we have to have a covering to protect this thing called our life, called our body. Watch this. Christ said when I create them, I have to create them just so it's to the point that they have to know that they need a covering right. on the outside. And the covering, he said, when I created man, I created kingdom. And I'm going to give them skin to represent that they need a covering. Christ is the head and the covering 
of man. Come on, y'all. He said, I can't even create them without creating a covering for them. He said, he said, as he was creating us, he there needs to be something that covers us. So while he was creating us the entire time, he knew he had to represent the kingdom covering. Amen. Psalms 91 and 4 says, he will cover watch this he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart so he said i can't even create you because in the kingdom there is a covering for the kingdom and as i create man man has to have a what has to have a covering. So when one street, one system was so strategic that symbolized covering because it symbolized kingdom. The second system was the muscular system. If we go to the muscular system, we have to understand that the muscular system provides strength. Somebody say strength. The muscular system can be likened to strength and power that God provides to his people. He knew that while I'm protecting and covering them with the skin, they got to have a little muscle. They got to have a little stamina to get through this thing called life. He said, I am the one that is going to give them the strength that they need. So as I establish the covering, I got to give them strength for the covering. Watch this. He said, I got to remind them to work their muscles. The more you work your muscles, guess what happens in the natural? The more you work your muscles in the natural, the stronger you become. Guess who the strength is? He said, I'm going to give them a covering, which is me. I got to cover them. I got to cover them through my son. He said, but I also got to give them strength. He said, in the kingdom, I'm going to let them know that they can do all things through who? Christ. Through Christ that strengthens them. He said, I got to let them know that not only do they need the covering, but they need the strength from the covering. Come on, somebody. They, they need the strength from the covering, and they got to understand that they can't do it without their strength. They can't do it without their muscles. If you work your muscles in the gym every day, you're going to become stronger. If Christ is your strength, Christ represents the word. But if you work the word every day, you're going to become stronger. He said you got to understand that if you can do it through Christ, and in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. He said in the beginning was the word. The word is Christ. He said, if you're going to work your muscles, come on, somebody. That means you got to work the word so that the word can give you the strength. It's a systematic strategy from God. Come on, y'all. We got to understand that our systems will work if we work them. The third system that we talked about is the skeletal system. We said that the skeletal system is the framework. It's the foundation for which we move and have our being. When God created us, he knew he had to give us a foundation to know who we are, to know who created us, to know who gave us life. The, the skeletal system represents the foundation of the word, the foundation of our faith the foundation of the church as a whole. It is through the word that the church moves. It is through the word that the church believes. It is through the word that the movement of God and the movement of God that we find favor. It is through the word. And then we say this, Matthew 16 and 18. He said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not That's overcome right. That's it. Right. As you are moving with the word as your foundation, you have to understand, you have to determine in your life right now, am I moving with the word as my foundation or am I moving with the world as my foundation? Wow. You have to determine which one are you moving with? Are you moving with the word or are you moving with the world? 
world. Because there is a distinction between the two. And how many of you know that God said, I will distinguish between the two. I will distinguish between those that are in my word and those that are in my world. Because those that are in my word, he said, I'm building a strong foundation that the devil can't manipulate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we go to the nervous system. Somebody say they're getting on my nerves. <laughs> when you say they're getting on my nerves, they're getting, they're messing with your soul. The nervous system correlates to your soul system. Why does the nervous system correlate to your soul system? Because the nervous system houses your, your mind, yeah, 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 your yeah, thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it connects your mind with your brain. Your brain connects to your heart. And in your heart, your mind begins to tell your heart stuff. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, before the, the heart can even minister to the mouth, you have to first think it <laughs> and so God says I know that he said that we got to understand that the nervous system controls and coordinates body activities it sends signals through your body your mind your emotions your brain function when you watch your nerves watch this when you watch your nerves, you're watching your soul come on now come on when you watch your nerves meaning when you watch your emotions you're watching over your so, when you watch your nerves, you're watching over what? Yes, when God created us, he wanted us to have emotions. He wanted us to have a soul. He wanted us to sense love because he wanted us to sense him. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to flow. Y'all got to follow. He wanted us to sense love because he wanted us to sense him. God is love. And your nervous system, a.k.a. your soul system, when it is in check, it can feel the love of God. When it's in check, it can feel the presence of God. When your nervous system, a.k.a. your soul system, is functioning like God created it, you will not have a doubt that God is moving in your life because your nerves will sense it. Your soul will sense it. You will pick up on it and you will want more of this thing called love, a.k.a. more of this thing called God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it encourages believers to trust in the Lord with all of their heart mm -hmm. and lean not to your own understanding. Yes, God. God knew what he was doing. Yes. Endocrine, somebody say endocrine system. Endocrine. endocrine system produces hormones that regulates various body functions. When your hormones are in order, that means your hormones have to flow in a timely manner, right? If your hormones get out of check, if there is an imbalance and the timing and the flow of your hormones is off, you will tend to have problems in your body. You, if your hormones are everywhere, that means that you are everywhere right. because your hormones are not functioning timely in the manner in which God created it. When God created us, he knew that he had to create a system that maintained order. Just as there is order in the kingdom, there had to be order placed in the, on the inside of you. That's where the endocrine system comes in because it creates hormonal order. Hormonal order. The endocrine system or hormonal order is compared to the divine timing and the order that is in God's kingdom. Just as the hormones regulate the body function, God's timing governs the events in our life. Hormonal system, it symbolizes kingdom order. Come on now. Why do you have to have order with your hormones? Because your hormones are connected to your soul. If your soul is everywhere, it is outside of kingdom. And that's exactly where Satan wants you to be. He wants you to be a hormonal imbalanced person because your hormones 
can send you straight to hell. Watch this. It is your hormones that is enclosed with your soul because it is where your emotions come from. When there is an, an out of order hormonal system, watch this, and you begin to get attitudinal, you begin to get frustrated, you begin to get caught up in yourself, pride sits in and the devil can take over. Come on, somebody. Have you ever wondered why the devil is always after soul? Soul is mind, will, emotions. He's always after your mind, your will, and your emotions because he can create disorder when it comes to kingdom. Circulatory. Transports blood. I got to say that again. Transports blood. Nutrients, gases. When God created us, he knew that there had to be a circulation of the blood. Why? Because the life is in, guess what? And he knew that the blood had to circulate through you. Well, who is the blood? Come on, somebody. He knew that he that we had to have a healthy circulatory or cardiovascular system to promote a healthy heart. You have to have the blood of Jesus so that your heart can be healthy. Yes. And the blood can circulate through you, creating a whole being. Mm -hmm. So if your heart is healthy, that means that the blood is flowing like it should be. Mm -hmm. We have to have the blood of Jesus applied over our lives so that we can live, guess what? A healthy, spiritual life life. That's right. Amen. And not only does the blood promote healthy spiritual life, but we can apply the blood, watch this, over every sickness, over every disease, yeah. over every circumstance, over every situation. It is in the circulation of the blood that we take the blood and we apply it over everything that we're going through. And the blood will, will promote a healthy life. Yes. My God. Ephesians 1 and 7. In him, we have redemption through what? His blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. It's through the blood. Look at the lymphatic immune system. The immune system, guess what the immune system does? It defends the body against disease and maintains fluent balance. Watch this. When God created us, he knew that we had to have a system that protects our bodies from attacks. Oh, y'all got to flow with this. I need y'all to be thinking. When he created us, like in the natural, he said, I got to give them an, an immune system. Because that's what they need to protect them against attacks that come against their body. But watch this. In the kingdom, he said, I got to give them a system that will protect them from the attacks and the wiles of the enemy. Yeah. That's good. Ephesians 6 and 11, believers are instructed to put on their immune system. Come on, y'all. Believers are instructed to put on the immune system to cover them, to protect them, to keep them in the midst of adversity, in the midst of attacks, in the midst of everything that the devil thought he was doing. Ephesians 6 through 10. We all 6, 10 through 18. Watch this. He said, finally be strong in the Lord with his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's scheme. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, authorities, powers of God's world, spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on your immune system. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after everything you've done, stand. Now here is our immune system in the kingdom. Watch this. Here is our immune system in the kingdom. He says, stand firm with the belt of truth. Buckled around your waist. Here's another part of your immune system in the kingdom. The breastplate of righteousness. And with, you, and with your feet fitted with the readiness to come. That comes from the gospel of peace. He said, in addition to this, here's another part of your immune system from the kingdom. A shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the enemy, of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and pray in the spirit on all occasions. 
occasions. Break it down. What's your immune system? The belt of truth. The belt of truth, it secures all the other pieces together. It holds everything together. Knowing and living by the truth of God's what? His word. The belt of truth. He said, this is your immune system. It's part of your immune system. Put this around your waist because it's going to hold all the other parts together. He said, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Why? Because I need you to cover your heart. He said, because your heart is what the enemy is after. Because that's where your soul lives. He said, I need you to put something on that's going to cover your heart. That when the enemy tries to attack you, tries to attack your family, tries to attack your finances, he said, I need you to put your immune system on. That's going to cover your heart. He said the gospel of peace has a footwear. He said because shoes prepare the way that you are going. He said shoes prepare one for movement and for stability. He said so put on your shoes and go in peace. Because the devil is going to try to bring depression, anxiety, fear. He said but when you put on them shoes, part of your immune system is going to allow you to walk in the peace of God. It's going to allow you to walk in the favor of God. And it's going to allow you to to walk under the anointing of God that no matter what comes to attack you come on somebody you done put your shoes on come on hallelujah part of your immune system is your shield of faith he said your shield of faith protects you against the enemy's attack you have faith in God's promises faith in God's character faith, faith in his will so when the dogs come, come on somebody, it's not going to mess with your faith because you put on a shield that can't penetrate. Come on somebody, that the devil can't penetrate your faith even if he tried to. Thank you, Lord. Immune system. He said you're going to have to put on the helmet of salvation because it protects your head. Come on, y'all. It protects your mind. It protects your thoughts. It protects everything that the devil is trying to put in you. He said put on the helmet of salvation so that when fear and doubt come in, he said you got your helmet on, bro. You ready to play some football. You ready to knuckle up with the devil. Come on, somebody. He said you got to keep that helmet of salvation all the days of your life because your salvation is your hope until the end. Yes. That's why people can be saved one day and serving Buddha the next because they took their helmet off. Yes. That's why you can believe in Jesus one day and be a, a Hebrew black Christian some, some the next day because you took your helmet off. You ain't letting all this foolishness penetrate your mind and make you think God ain't real when he is. Amen. Put your helmet on because it's part of the immune system of the kingdom. And he said in this, he said, and also I give you the sword, the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is simply my word. That when the devil comes at you one way, you got a sword that'll cut the head of the enemy off. When he tries to discombobulate, when he tries to mess it up, he said, just give him the word and cut everything that's trying to cut you. He said, cut everything that's trying to cut you. This is part of your immune system, yeah. your kingdom system that help you fight, but not only help you fight, it's going to help you win. Come yeah. on, somebody. Yeah. 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 And the last thing in that, he said, in verse 18, he said in prayer. Yeah. He said, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. Yeah. Mm. He said, because prayer is what's going to keep that immune yeah. system intact. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. He said, because all that stuff I told you to put on, he said, you got to pray about it because some days you ain't going to feel like putting it on. He said, some days you got to pray about it because you ain't going to feel like walking that thing out. He said, you got to He said you gotta pray on all occasions because I can tell you what to put on in your immune system. He said, but some days you're going to get out the bed and be like, I sure don't feel like fighting a day. I sure don't feel like fasting a day. I sure don't feel like going through this crap today. God said, pray. So your immune system can work like I ordained it to work. Your kingdom immune system need to go somewhere. It don't need to be on the shelf looking at it. Oh, there go my helmet right there. There go my sword. Oh, it's a little heavy. I don't feel like putting it on today. God said pray. Because I'm going to give you the strength to put it on. This is still our review. Y'all say review. <laughs> our respiratory system. Oh, my God. Y'all can't tell me God ain't real. Everything that he created in you, it was already in the kingdom. 
It was already in him. How you supposed to function is already in him. Watch this, the respiratory system facilitates breathing and provides oxygen when, which is vital for your life. Watch this. When God created us, he knew he had to breathe on us. Come on, somebody. So he blew the breath of life in us so that we can move and have our being. God is so systematic and so strategic that he blew the air. He blew the breath on us. He blew his spirit on us. He knew that. He said, I got to put my spirit in them. He said, because if I don't blow on them, the devil going to blow on them. He said, if I don't put something on the inside of them, the devil is going to corrupt them. He said, I got to blow the breath of life on them and remind them that you are only moving and breathing because I blew on you and gave you a sucker, a respiratory system that'll keep you alive. He said, you're only moving and breathing because I am the respiratory system of your life. And if you didn't have my breath, come on somebody, you wouldn't even be moving. But guess what? And when it's time for you to go back home to the kingdom, you're going to blow your breath back unto him. You're going to give him back what he gave you. And then you're going to be like the angels because you don't need his breath. You're going to be just like the angels and you're going to be holy, holy, holy all day long. Hallelujah. Genesis 2 and 7. Then the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and here's your respiratory system. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being in John 20 and 22 and with that he breathed on them and said receive the Holy Spirit yes. say this system works, this system works. If, you work it. if you work it 10 and 11 digestive and inspiratory identifies and breaks down food into nutrients for the body. It removes waste and maintains the body's internal environment. And we said last week that our digestive and excretory system identifies when waste comes in, but it also identifies when waste needs to go out. This system is called our discernment and deliverance. When we discern when crap that came into our mind or our body, when garbage has come in to the way we talk and the way we walk, he said that is the gift of discerning of a spirit that is not like my God. When you begin to talk foolish, when you begin to walk foolish, he said you already know good from evil. He said because I put a system within you to recognize when something ain't right. And he said, and then when something ain't right, you got to want it gone. Come on, somebody. That's why deliverance comes in. That's why your respiratory system, your digestive system have to work properly. Because if you let mess sit, come on, somebody, it'll kill you. You'll be stuck on stupid. And the natural mess can't sit on the inside of you. Or you'll roll over and die. Because God didn't create you to carry mess. Come on, God. God didn't create you to carry mess. Yes. That's right, amen. That's what deliverance and discernment. In John, 1 John 1 and 9, it says, if we confess our sins, mm -hmm. that means that you have discerned that something ain't right about you. That's right. Uh-uh, forget your husband. Forget your wife. Right. Forget your family. Right. Forget them folks on your job who cutting up. Yeah. Forget the people in your school that's, that's acting right. up. That's he right. said, you have discerned something about who? You. you. Yeah, right. If you Amen. confess, if we confess our sins, our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us yeah. our right. sins right. and to cleanse. Yeah. This is where it has to come out. Yeah. Mm, my God. This is where the deliverance system is in place. Because he will come in. You confess that I got crap in. Now crap got to come out because I done gave it to the Lord. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Discern. And deliver. Yeah. Cleanse us from all righteousness. And the last one was our reproductive system. One of uh, uh, a very important system, not just in the natural, but in the supernatural. It enables us to reproduce and continue our species. God knew that when he created us, we needed to be fruitful and to multiply. If we were going to keep this thing going. 
Now, just in the natural, not just in the natural, but in the spiritual, with multiplication of, guess what? His church. He said, because you need to reproduce after your own kind. Because guess what, Sean P., when you get to school, there are going to be people that, there are going to be folk that don't look like you, that don't walk like you, that don't talk like you. So I need your reproduction system in order because I need you to go and reproduce after your own kind, meaning that I need you to go and share the word of God. I need you to go to preach. I need you to go teach. I need you to go prophesy. I don't care how young you are. You can tell somebody, I don't do that because I love the Lord. Come on, y'all. I don't do that because I, Jesus saved my life. I don't do that because I realize that doing wrong don't make it right. I don't do that because I realize that some of my other friends that did that, I see what happened to them. And because I see what happened to them, I can't go that route. God said, you got to go and reproduce after your own kind. You got to go and share the gospel of my truth. He says in Matthew 28 and 19, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So just like babies produce in the natural, you got to produce spiritual babies in the supernatural. It ain't just up to your pastor. Come on, somebody. Amen. It ain't just up to a prophet. Amen. It ain't just up to a teacher. You got to go and tell your friends about Jesus. Amen. You got to go in Walmart and share with somebody that don't believe that God still got you. You got to go and pay for somebody's coffee behind you at Starbucks and give them the message that Jesus says. Come on, somebody. You got to go and reproduce. You got to go and try to make disciples. That means that you got to go and plant seeds wherever you can plant seeds. That's right. That's right. That's right. And it ain't just your pastor's responsibility. That's right. That's right. He didn't say go pastors. <laughs> he said go ye and make disciples. That's right. That's it. You're right. Oh, yeah. But I got to say this as we move on. All these systems were composed of and created by one system. <laughs> and that's the love system. Y'all ready to talk about love? Yes. yes. All these systems were composed of and created by one system. That one system is the love system. Jeremiah 1 and 5, he says, before I formed you in the womb, come on somebody, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I anointed you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah in the NLV says, before I started to make you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart as holy. I chose you to speak to the nations for me. Here's the first thing about love. The first systematic structure for love is that love creates what it wants to have. Come on, somebody. Come on now. Come on. Love creates what it wants to have. Oh my goodness, because God had a love for you, he created what he wanted to see. You, if you walk in love, if you walk in this love system, you can create whatever you want to see. You can walk in the house and create an atmosphere of love. You can walk on your job and create love. You can walk anywhere you want and shift an atmosphere because you chose to walk in love. You can create. See, love creates. Y'all better say love creates. Love creates what it wants to see. Because I love you. I'm going to create an atmosphere to let you know that love is here. Come on, y'all. Right. I got to say that louder. Because I love you, I'm going to create an atmosphere for you that lets you know that I love you. Right. Y'all watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I love this. Before God created Adam. <laughs> Before God created Adam. Go read your Bible. He created a whole system that was in place. The ecological system, the solar system. Come on, all them systems I talked about last week. Before God even created Adam, he created systems that showed Adam, I love you and I got you. Because I know you're going to need the sun, you're going to need the moon, you're going to need the stars, you're going to need my plants, you're going to need my animals, you're going to, come on somebody. Before God even created Adam, he created an atmosphere of love that let Adam know, I got you, boo. I'm going to create an atmosphere for you because I love you. I'm going to create an atmosphere for you because I'm going to let you know that I got you from beginning 
to Eve. Before God created Adam, he created love. He created a system that let Adam know that I got you. Love creates the right atmosphere. Love creates the right attitude. Mm, my God. Love creates, watch this, love still creating. Love creates the right support. That's right. Because I love you, I'm about to create for you. Created me a clean heart. Mm, come on, somebody. Created me a clean, because I love you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want you to create in me uh -huh. because I know you love me. Love See, love, what it does? Creates. Create. Yes, love creates what you want to see. Watch this for all my single women, all my single men. <laughs> because you're going to love the person that's coming. You're going to create the right person now. Come on, y'all. You're going to work on you now. You ain't going to wait till he or she gets there. Because you're going to love the person. You already love them. All right? You know you already love them. You're preparing yourself for that moment. Because you know you're going to already love that person. I'm going to create me now. So that when they come, I'm ready. Love what? Creates. Every system that God created had a root foundation in love. God created in love. He produced in love. He does all things in love because guess what? He is love. So I'm going to do right by you because I love you. I'm going to create a do-right atmosphere because I love you. My God. Jeremiah 31 and 3. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Everything that he did for us. Creating sun, moon, stars, trees, plants, rivers, oceans, fish. Everything that he did. He created it before we even came. Because he wanted us to know that he loves us. John, 1 John 4 and 8. Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. Here's a point. You cannot separate love from the foundation of who you are. Come on now. Mm -hmm. If you separate love from the foundation of who you are, you just separated you from God. Oh, mm -hmm. mama. If you separate you from love, you just separated you from God. When there is a separation from love, guess what happened? And we all have this moment. You'd be like, oh, I don't separate myself from God. Yes, you do. How do we separate ourselves from God? When we allow pride to come in. When we allow arrogance to come in. When we allow stubbornness to come in. When we allow hate to come in. You just separated yourself from love. Because if you separate yourself from love, you separate yourself from God. So it's up to you to have a moment and say, God, you know what? I can't let pride win because if pride wins... It separates me from you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And because I choose to not walk in pride and choose to walk in love, I'm saying I choose this day whom I'm going to serve. Yeah, that's it, Anything in opposition to love is in opposition to God. Yeah. So when you come in in your house and you are in opposition to love, you got to ask yourself, what spirit did you just bring in this house? Come on now. Because you can't operate outside of the love system and not repent when you are truly in God. You have to repent. Say repent. Repent. The second thing. Well, well let's go back. Love creates what we want to see. Right? The second systematic structure. Not only does love create, but love sacrifices and gives. Love sacrifices yes. and love gives. That is yes. the second thing love creates, 
But love also sacrifices and love gives. I got to sacrifice something in order to manifest the love that I want to see. Listen, God knew that in order for him to love us all the way through without just killing us dead and acting like we never existed. He knew that he had to sacrifice for us because he loved us so much. Sacrifice or give. Romans 5 and 8. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still, come on somebody. While we were still sinners. While we were still knuckleheads. While we were still doing our thing and forgetting about God. He said, I'm going to send Christ Jesus to die. That's good. 1 John 3 and 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for him. For our brothers and sisters. First John 4 and 9. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only. Watch this. Watch this. Love will see the need. And love will sacrifice for the need. Wow. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yes, yes. God saw the need. Yes, for the world to have a savior. So he sacrificed his son. Yes. You can see the lead and the need for your next level in whatever area. It could be marriage. It could be business. It could be whatever. You can see the need, but if you don't sacrifice for the need, is it love? Because love is not going to see a need and not give a sacrifice for it. Love is not going to see a need and not sacrifice for whatever that need is. If that person needs more love and less of your pride, I'm going to sacrifice pride so I can release love. If somebody, if God said, I need you to sow a seed, and you say, God, but $10 in the bank, and God says, so five, he's, you say, God, I'm going to sacrifice for the need that you just told me. If there is a need... If you truly love and you see a need, but you ignore it, ask yourself, are you truly walking in love? Because love will see the need and always sacrifice for the need. Love will see a need and always give towards a need. Oh, my goodness. Love will see a need and give to the need. Because I love you, I'm going to give my time to you. Because I love you, I'm going to give my resources to you. Because I love you, I'm going to give my heart to you. Because I love you, I'm going to give to whatever you just say you need it. Because I love you. You said you need more time, more attention, less of my attitude. Because I love you, I'm going to sacrifice for you. You may have to sacrifice an atmosphere or an environment. You. you may have to uh, sacrifice friends. You may have to put a relationship on the altar and sacrifice it. You may have to sacrifice your religious mindset. You may have to sacrifice your prideful ways. You may have to sacrifice my way or no way. You know why? Because love sacrifices. Love sees a need. And love says, I got to become whatever is needed. Amen. Sacrifice means to let go and let God. Amen. I got to let that stubbornness go. I got to let cussing folk out go. Yes. I got to let go of that anger. I got to let go. Because if I have not love, then what? I have not God. If I have not love, I have not God. If I got to show love, I got to I gotta do it because I got to show that I have God in my heart. God said you will know them by their fruits. Come on. So love creates. Love sacrifices and gives. Number three, love forgives. Yes. My God, yes. somebody got to give this today. Because yes. somebody need to forgive from 20 years ago. Some of us need to forgive from 30, 40, 50 years ago. Somebody need to forgive from yesterday and this morning. Somebody oh, need to forgive. Not because not love forgives. Love forgives. It's a system of the kingdom. Love creates. Love sacrifices. The systematic strategy of love is that love always forgives. Because forgiveness is a salvation issue. Come on. Oh my goodness. If you don't forgive, you can't be forgiven. 
is a systematic strategy of the kingdom that we can't get, we can't separate ourselves from as Christians. This is simple, but it's hard. Somebody say it's hard because somebody might have molested you. Somebody might have raped you. Somebody might have cussed you out. Somebody might have embarrassed you. Somebody might have rejected you at a young age. But love what? Love forgives. Because love is a systematic strategy of the kingdom. Love forgives. You can't hold bitterness in your heart. Because love forgives. You stand before God and God is going to be like, I never knew you. And then the scripture said that they said, but didn't I pray? Didn't I preach, teach, prophesy? Didn't I lay hands on the sick? God said, I never knew you. He said, why? Because you had not love. You have not God. So you faked it the whole time. You checked the box for church the whole time. You showed up the whole time. Give your applause, but that's a salvation issue, brother. That's a salvation issue, sister. If you have not love, you have not God. If you have not forgiven your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your cousin, your sister from another mother, your co-worker, your boss. Come on, somebody. If you have not forgiven, you don't have God. That's a systematic strategy of the kingdom. Matthew 6, 14 and 15 says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. First Peter 4 and 8, above all, love each other deeply because love is going to cover what they did to you. Come on, somebody. Love is going to cover what they said. Love is going to cover how they acted a plum fool in front of your family. Love is going to cover how they raped you when you were five years old. Love is going to cover how they touched you when you was 12. Love is going to cover that. Let God deal with them. God ain't looking at them. God in that moment is looking at you. He said, I'll deal with them, but I'm worried about you right now because you said you was a Christian. They ain't confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. He said, don't honor me with your mouth and your heart be far away from me. How is your heart far away from me? Because you sitting over there acting like you love everybody, but hate your fill in the blank. Fill in the blank with who you hating right now. Bitterness. I gotta give you more scriptures. But then Matthew 18, 21, 22 says, then, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often should I, I, I Peter was tired. You know, Peter was the one that would say something when nobody else say that. Peter like, listen, bro, I'm tired of these, these folk had a problem. But how, he said, I just got a question. <laughs> how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Seven times? I can't. I got seven in me. Peter was letting him know, I got seven. And seven after that, it's over. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, I say not unto you seven times, but 70 times seven. Which means that ain't nobody going to hurt you that many times in a day. That means God was telling him, Jesus was telling him, it don't matter how many times they did it in one day. You're going to walk away from that. You know what? Let me just walk away from this and tell God to help me love you. Because yes. right now, brother, my sister, my friend, right now, I got to go let Jesus deal with this heart because I don't have love right now. See, it starts with confession. I got to confess that right now I, don't, I, don't, I can't forgive him. So I got to go in my prayer closet. Come on, somebody. Because I can't do it in my strength. But what did the Bible tell us? We can do all things through. Because I can't forgive them right now. So I'm going to go to my prayer closet. Because God told me to do it 70 times, 70. He ain't had but one time. Come on, somebody. Somebody say one time. He ain't had but one time to cross me. But God said, you got a lifetime of hell in that moment, or you got a lifetime of heaven in that moment. So you got to choose ye this day which one you going to serve. Are you going to live in that moment where he crossed you? And let that man cause you to lose your salvation? Because salvation is your hope until the end. Come on, somebody. The book of Revelation said your salvation is your hope until the end. So if that brother cross you, come on, somebody. I ain't, ain't saying I've been delivered from fighting either. But listen, after I fight, after I say what I got to say, I got to humble myself and say, God, I was wrong. Because what they not going to do is steal my salvation. Matter of fact, they ain't even stealing it. You giving it to them. You giving it to them because you letting you come up and not God come up. So, so I got to choose in that moment, if the systematic structure of the kingdom is to forgive, I got to choose in that moment if I'm going to forgive them. And let me tell you a secret. 
when you see them next time and you feel a certain kind of way, you ain't forgave, bro. You still got that stuff in your heart. That stuff's still in your spirit. You ain't detoxed yet. You ain't let God have it yet. You talking a good talk. Oh, that don't bother me. But baby, if I see them, come on, somebody. Have you ever been around somebody and you be like, mm, hey. Hey. Have you ever been around somebody and you know they did you wrong, but you got to look them straight in the face and you got to say it with love. How you doing today? Man, it's good seeing you. I know the last time we saw each other, it wasn't right. But brother, I tell you, I love you with the love of God. Come on, somebody. You got to stare that devil dead in the face. Because guess what? They probably ain't saved. They probably ain't changed their life. But you, because you confess Jesus is Lord of your life, you got to look at him without them butterflies. You got to look at him without them emotions. You got to look at him without that oh in you. You got to let that gangster go. Say, let that gangster go. Oh, that's the devil. Come on, somebody. That's why the devil is always after your soul. He's always after your emotions. Because he said if I can get them caught up in their emotions, I got them. I got them. That's why you got to understand the soul system. The devil ain't never after your money. He ain't never after your relationship. He always after your soul because your soul is your emotions. And how you going to deal with your situation? God said 70 times seven, bro. Because Peter went half. Peter was feeling a certain kind of way. About this love stuff. And this for the birds. I mean, it's for the birds. They ain't got but one time, Jesus. That's all I got to say. They ain't got but one time. They ain't got but one time to cross me, Jesus. And I'm just trying. I'm just saying. I ain't say I've been delivered from thugism. My kids will be like, we know, Ma, you a thug. We can't mess with you. Yeah, I said it. Yes, I did. I said, don't, don't be messing with me, little boy. Oh, we know you a thug. Okay, we get it. <laughs> Sometimes you got to put the fear of God in those that want to try you. Don't try me. Try Jesus. And I'm going to repent later. Okay, I'm going to repent because I know I can't stay stuck on school. Mm, my God. Colossians 3.13. <laughs> Bear with one another. And if one has a complaint against another one, forgive each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you can be forgiven. These, these scriptures are so beautiful. Yes, they are. <laughs> when you get in that moment, can you go to Colossians 3 and 13? Can you go to Matthew 18, 21, 22, and all them? Matthew 5 and 24. He even talks about if you got a problem at, before you even go to the altar. He don't even want you to come to the altar. That's right. That's right. Wow. He said it. Leave your gift there. That's right. Don't bring me nothing. That's go. First be reconciled to your brother. Then you could come yeah. to me. That's how serious God takes it. That's right. Ooh, that's, that's right. That's how he's like, I don't even want you to come to me. Don't even pray. Don't I don't want your prayers. I don't want none of your prayers. I don't want your prayers. I don't want your prayers. I don't want you to say I don't want, he don't want our prayers. He don't want our prayers. He don't want That's right. <laughs> don't even try to pray. There's one particular scripture that men, he said, men only. He tell me, he's a husband, if you ain't doing right by your wife, I ain't even listen to your prayers. Why? Because he thinks it's so it's so important that you get it right. That's right. That's right. Now, women, this verse is neutral. He didn't say men. He didn't say women. That's right. He said, leave your gift. Say your gift. Your gift. Your gift. That's him, her, boy, girl, man. And it don't even matter. All y'all. Say all y'all. All y'all. Right. Right. He said, leave your gift before the altar right. go. That's right. First, be reconciled. To your brother, and then come, and then I'll, I'll take your little gift. That's right. I'll take your little prayer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take your little fasting. Right. Now, he said, because otherwise you're fasting for no reason. You just fast. Yeah, I don't know how the grown folks say you fast. They used to tell us we fast. He said, you just fast. Because you just fasting because you fast because you ain't for real. Wow. Right? You're just being fast. Just trying to show people in the spirit that you fast. But for what? I don't want your fast. Come on now, pastor. You just on a diet for a day, bro. You on a diet. You better say that. Because God don't want that fast. Just go on and eat that chicken. Because he ain't feeling it. He ain't feeling it. You wasting, wasting a fast day. This is a waste of a fast day. Just go on and get it right. Listen, y'all, it ain't worth your salvation. 
the whole bitterness in your heart. Because that's a salvation issue. That's a kingdom system that you won't ever be able to deny. I don't care how long you've been in the church. For love cast out fear. I'm going to speak this up because I'm almost done. Love, here's a systematic strategy of love. It will cast out fear every time. There is no fear in love. John, 1 John 4 and 18. But perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. That's right. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. For God, and tells us in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So anytime fear tries to creep in, you got to think about things above. And you gotta, and I, every time I start fearing something, I, say, I tell myself, God did not give me a spirit of fear. I gotta trust him. I gotta Amen. trust him. Amen. God did not give me Amen. a spirit of fear. Remind yourself daily whenever he tries to come in. Because when you, when you, you say I give you love, love is God. Hmm. Love is also the word. So if you're gonna say love is gonna cancel out fear, what you're saying is, is the word is going to cancel out fear. Amen. Everybody understand that? Amen. God has not given us fear, but a power and of love. Well, love is God. God is love. Love and God is the word. So when fear comes in, you have to recite the word over fear. Because he didn't give it to you. That's a systematic. I tell you, if you use it, it will work. Fifth is the fifth thing. Fifth systematic structure is love unified. Love unifies. I got to say that again. Love unifies. You know they did it. You know they said it. You also know they are not as mature and wise as you're Amen. supposed to be. Right. So because you are, you going to make it right because they ain't mature enough. That's right. Y'all listen to me. Because you are who you say you are. That's right. You are mature enough. Uh -huh. Love unifies. That's right. You going to make it right. Even when they can't make it right. Because they don't have the maturity and the strength in the moment to do it. But because God put in you, you go do it. You are the mature one in this moment. That don't mean that they're less than. That just means that they can't handle this moment. You handle the moment. Because you are the mature one in this moment. So you go handle that. Say handle that. Because love is going to unify. Colossians 3 and 14. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in what? Perfect unity. That's right. Put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. It's not on the screen, but it's Colossians 3 and 14. That's the scripture that tells us you, love is going to unify everything. And then when you have a question, am I being the love? You, this scripture right here, very popular. Love is patient, love is kind. Put your name in it and ask yourself and break yourself on a scale of one to ten. Trish is patient. Trish wow. is kind. Wow. Trish does not boast. Trish is not proud. Trish does not dishonor others. Trish is not self-seeking. Trish is not easily angered. Trish keeps no record of wrong. Well, you know what you did yesterday, and I'm just trying. You know what I'm saying? Trish does not keep record of wrong. Trish does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always, Trish always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. If you put your name on that, mm, instead right. of love, what's your score on the one that's wrong? This is where you have to self-reflect. Has Trish been patient? Has Trish been kind? Wow. Has Trish not been envious? Has Trish not been boasting about who she is and what she's done? Has Trish not been prideful? Has Trish not been dishonoring people by calling them out their names? Mm -hmm. Has Trish not been self-seeking? Has Trish been easily angered? Mm -hmm. Has Trish been reminding you of what you did to her? Right. Mm -hmm. wow. Has Trish been entertaining foolishness? Mm -hmm. Has Trish been protecting and trusting and hoping and persevering wow. on a scale of one to ten you don't have to tell us where are you my god last but not least when we're done love is how it all should be done first corinthians 16 and 14 do everything in love, in love. that's right amen 
God created you in love. God created your systems in love. Before he even created you, he created every system in the world in what? Solar system, ecosystem. What's the most systems I talked about? Atmospheric system. All the systems. He said, you're going to need air to breathe, so I got to create air. He said, you're going to need sun and the moon. You're going to need all of that, so I got to create the solar system. He said, you're going to need plants. I got to create the ecological system. Before you even came into existence, God created every system that you could possibly need for you to live a fruitful, healthy, and enjoyable life. He did it in love. Come on, let's